Um, welcome back. I just wanted to, <laughs> to say, <laughs> I'm going to summarize it. I'm going to summarize it. We forgot to unmute. So I just wanted to say that this is a perfect example of data independence, uh, which means that you have your relational table and query language. It doesn't matter where you store it, can be DNA instead of a computer, it's still the same good old. So you see now the danger of using Python to query data on your drive is that you don't have data independence. If your data is no longer stored on a computer somewhere else, everything breaks, you need to do it all over again. With a query language and the data model, you don't have this problem. This is one of the things I want you to see in this, in this semester. Of course, if you still want to use Python and Pandas at the end, you can, but you will understand them even better. All right, so this is what I wanted to say. Now, what is the scope of the lecture? Well, we are obviously doing data science and data science had a lot of things starting with databases. It also has machine learning and AI. I'm not going to be doing any machine learning and AI during this semester. However, what we are doing connects to machine learning and AI. In fact, you'll see at the end that at RumbleDB, in RumbleDB, you can even use machine learning uh, algorithms to, to post-process the data that you, that you prepared, right? So I just make the connection but we don't actually cover machine learning and AI, just good old databases, database systems. And where's my pointer? Right here. So I would like to introduce you to our wonderful team of uh, TAs uh, who are um, uh, right here with us. Uh, if you want to come, you can come here. It's, there, there is no, nothing recorded here, right? Don't worry, you can come at the front, maybe that everybody sees you all the TAs, right? Is there any other TAs in the room? Yes, awesome. All right, so you see, you can see the pictures over here. So we have Wenxi, we have Marcin, we have Antonino, we have uh, Ludovica, we have Chen Xin, and we have uh, Wei Xuan, right? So, and uh, some of them are not here today, Hong Yu, um, uh, the other Marcin, there are two Marcins, uh, Dimitris, Maybe they're in the room? No, not in the room? All right. So a big applause in advance to all the TAs who are going, who are going to give the exercise sessions. So if you have any questions during the semester, anything is not clear, you can come to them. You can also come to me, of course, but don't hesitate to speak with, uh, with, uh, with your TAs. We created the groups uh, in, uh, in my studies that you can register to. It's all in presence, but some of them are hybrid, so you can also register there. They will share a Zoom link. We can't guarantee recordings. It's really at the discretion of the TAs, and I'm not putting any pressure for that. So it's really, uh, you, may, maybe some of them are agree to record. If we record, it's not going to YouTube, right? It's all internal in the Moodle, but uh, I will let you uh, decide uh, if you feel comfortable to do that. All right, uh, so uh, regarding the groups, try to register in, in my studies and go to a group. You have the choice between Wednesday afternoon, I think it's two to four something like this, Wednesday or uh, uh, Friday, right? So you have the two possibilities. If we run out of slots and you cannot find any seat anymore, contact us, we can increase the capacity uh, uh, of the hybrid exercises. We cannot increase the capacity of the rooms, of course, the elasticity stops here, but we might be able to open new exercise groups uh, if, uh, if really there are, uh, uh, there are even more people, right? Let us know if you cannot register for an exercise, let us know, do not just, stay quiet, right? So come to us and let us know. Uh, there will also be, I will uh, say a lot about that, right? Um, there is the Moodle of the course. In the Moodle of the course, you have the, uh, uh, I think they call it Moodle Overflow. It's like Stack Overflow, but for a course, you can ask all of your questions in there that uh, we together are going to answer. Um, and uh, that's the official channel, right? If you want an answer within 48 hours, that's the goal, then ask it on Moodle Overflow. Um, you can also use the element chat. It's just that there, has, there is no guarantee there, right? So the preferred channel is Moodle Overflow, right? You can also use the element chat to, to, you know, to chat on the main channel on anything related to the, to the course. If you are not registered, I tried to do a, a big batch of registration a few days ago, but if some of you are not there, just let us know and we can add you to the element chat. I will have a slide to show you exactly where to connect. All right, thank you very much for uh, being here with us. You can now go back to your seats and I will continue. All right. And by the way, I'm very careful. I mean, I take privacy very, very seriously. And this is why 
right now I'm recording, uh, you know, when I'm talking and myself, I'm not recording the room, right? This is not going on YouTube. Nobody's going to see you on YouTube uh, in here. Don't worry about that. Regarding questions, you can raise your hands at any time during the course. You can interrupt me. If you're on Zoom, you can do that too. You can, if you're shy, you can write your question in the chat and the TA will read it for you. Uh, if you feel comfortable enough, you can even raise your hand and even speak over Zoom. That's, poss that's uh, also possible. But if you speak over Zoom, it means you agree that this goes to YouTube, right? So if you don't want this, just write in the chat and this is, uh, this is fine too. Okay, we have this uh, microphone right here that uh, that we can uh, you know throw at you if you want to uh, to ask questions but again if you don't want to be recorded then tell us and uh, we'll just repeat your question uh, separately right look how great this is all right so what we have in the course is this this is the menu uh, we are going to cover trees cubes tables just not text uh, trees cubes tables and graphs uh, we are going to first talk about storage, because this is where it starts. We need to store the data. Then we st we'll talk about data models. Then we'll talk about data processing and querying, and then management with document stores and so on. So this is the plan. You have a lot of these technology buzzwords on the right, if you're interested. But this is basically what, uh, what we are going to do. All right, so this is going all the way from what's hidden, but nobody sees, all the way to the end user uh, who uses the system. So what's the deal? Well, there is an exam at the end, and of course you get your 10 credit points if you pass the exam, if you get a four. Uh, but in order to prepare for the exam, you should attend the weekly lectures. It's not mandatory, of course, but it's highly recommended, and I hope you, you enjoy the lectures. Uh, so Tuesday from two to four, Wednesday from uh, nine to 10. There's always more people on Zoom Wednesday. Because there there is a question on Oh, Zoom. there is a question, uh, go ahead. Why does it say summer session? Uh, why does it say summer yeah, session? And, uh, oh yeah, no, it's a winter session. That's uh, that's a mistake. There is no yeah. I, I I was drinking too much orange juice when when I wrote that. So yeah, that's the winter session, of course, January February. I cannot tell you the exam date. It's going to be announced uh, uh, probably in uh, in November or December. But this is ETH. This is not me, right? It's very complicated to plan. That's also a kind of database problem. How do you optimize everything? I see, I'm a database person. I see everything as a database problem, right? So, and maybe you will become like that as well at the end of the course. Anyway, so Wednesday, the exercise sessions, Wednesday, Fridays, I already told you, two hours. This is where you can ask all of the questions you do not dare to ask here. You can, you should self-study. I will give you a lot of material, but there is something new. And I will mention it, there is a textbook now. So there is a bit less different reading materials and a lot happens in the big data textbook. So that should actually make your life a bit easier, uh, but do take the time to read the, the mandatory readings, optional if you can as well. Play with technology, do not hesitate. We'll give you plenty of Docker Compose environments for this. It's very important to get some hands-on um, hands uh, uh, experience, but I'd still focus on the theory and the big story, right? Because the hands-on experience, that's easy. There's even you know online courses uh, to, to learn all of these things. I, I really want to focus on the theory and the big picture and the historical perspective in the course. But experience and hands-on is also part of the course. And finally, the written exam. Three hours, don't be scared. Three hours is because we want you to not have too much pressure. So we give you plenty of time, but actually there's only 60 questions. 60 questions, multiple choice kind of question, right? So not 60 essays, 60 questions. Um, it's Moodle, it's going to be a computer exam. Uh, some of you might already have had computer exams. Um, and there is going to be the Moodle environment similar to the quizzes that you'll have during the semester, except that the exam is more precise than the quizzes. The quizzes during the semester, the goal is to trigger your thoughts, right? So the quizzes might sometimes be formulating in a more vague way, just to trigger your thoughts. The exam, we are way more careful with the precision of the questions. All right. So in the way, it's the summer session on the other side of the, on the, in the South Hemisphere, just for my defense, right? But January, February. Now I have good news for you. This is something that is incredibly popular and that was introduced by ETH a few years ago. It's called bonus points. I think the fancy word is continuous performance assessment. What we want to do is encourage you to study during the semester, right? We want you to solve the exercises, go to the exercise sessions, go to the lectures. Why? Because the secret, 
there is a secret of how you how you learn things. The secret is long over long periods, get something to eat and get enough sleep. This is the secret because then your brain processes everything. So this is over long periods. So in order to motivate you to do things during the semester, we're going to have 25 quizzes. Each one of the quizzes gives you 0 0.01 uh, bonus points. It gets added to the final grade. So if you get the 25 quizzes, you have a guaranteed plus 0 0.25 at the exam. Most people in my experience actually do this, right? And this really uh, helps with the learning. Uh, if you get a 6, you don't get 625. This is where it stops, right? But for everybody else, you, you, you can get potentially a quarter point more. So I encourage you to do this. I would also like to encourage you to disagree. I, I don't know if the TAs will actually like that, but um, if you don't pass uh, a quiz and you disagree on a question, initiate the discussion. You know, try to argue, build an argument, explain why you know it might have been imprecise, there is this other interpretation and so on. I love to see an engaged dialogue like that because it means you're actually thinking about the material. And so it happens, I saw it in the previous semesters, uh, that we granted more points because we received good arguments, right? That was totally acceptable. So in fact, what is the point of studying in here? There, is, there was once a le guest lecturer who put it very well. The goal of your studies here is that later you can meet at an event, I don't know, a, a, a Fields medalist or a Nobel Prize or a Turing Award winner, and you can have a conversation with them. You can disagree with them. You can argue with them. This is the goal. And so you can practice with us. You can disagree with us, right? And, and I'm not saying we will accept everything, but it's really worth trying to think about things and don't hesitate to, uh, to ask if there is something you don't understand or have a different interpretation. All right. Uh, so this is the bonus points. This is the textbook that I told you about. So it's actually, uh, it looks like this now. We have a, a visual. This was a popular demand that started a few years ago where many students wanted this. They wanted a textbook that kind of mirrors the slides, what I'm telling you in the lecture, but in a written form, because a lot of you like to read. Um, so now it exists. It's a free PDF. You just go to this, uh, to this page and it's on ResearchGate, which is a research uh, uh, place where you store papers. Uh, and you can just download it. I will update it. If you find mistakes, tell me because I fix them and you even get your name in the acknowledgement section. I keep the list of the names of those of you who find mistakes, right? So don't hesitate to let me know. Those who really want a printed copy, you can get one, uh, but I'm not encouraging you to do this because again, the, the, there will be updates on the PDF version during the semester, and this is the one that matters. But I know that not everybody likes screens, right? So if, if you want something to read, you can also try to have the paper copy. But just a word of warning, the paper copy that's based on the big data for engineers part of the material. In addition to this, this semester, we have key value stores, graph databases, and data cubes, and these are not in the book yet. I, I will add them. I will try to add them during the semester, but these will only be in the PDF, so just that, so that you are aware uh, of this, uh, that this is uh, the, it's the PDF that is the exam material. All right, uh, so this is the textbook, and again, and you can even spread it. It's publicly free. I mean, anybody in the world can download it. You can even share it. Uh, with, uh, with the link without any problem, right? Okay, now with the exercises and the practical exercises, the TAs did a great job preparing uh, Docker environments. Who knows Docker? Oh, a lot of you, great. So Docker is a way to make things work on pretty much any laptop. Doesn't matter if you have Linux, Windows, Mac OS, uh, it, it, it basically eases the installation. And so the TAs in the past semesters have prepared Docker environments for the exercises. And a lot of what we are going to do is going to happen in Docker. Don't worry that it's not a data center because in order to, to make a data center work, you first need to make a machine work, right? And a lot, lot of the things we are going to do translates to, uh, to large scales, but we are able to reproduce um, this on your laptop. And by the way, maybe I can give you also this um, piece of advice for those of you who might be founding startups or have a project or want to analyze data, it's very tempting to just directly start with a data center. In fact, there might be reasons if you want the ability to scale and, and grow later. But a lot of data, a lot of databases actually first fits on a machine. There's a lot of data sets that are just a few gigabytes. You don't need a data center for that, it fits on your laptop. 
And the second aspect is that I already said it, but a laptop has multiple cores. You maybe you have four cores, eight cores, maybe even more now. Um, and this is incredible what you get out of a laptop. Never underestimate that. Once you know how to get a lot of power out of your laptop, then you can imagine what you will get from a data center. But do not start with a data center immediately because you, you might waste a lot of resources and not get the most out of it, right? So this is why we are focusing a lot on laptops as well. But I'll come, I'll come back to, to this. Um, all right, that is, uh, oh yeah, I didn't realize I had the double slides. That was uh, before I had the cover. This is the place for the element chat. So you can go to the official chats.ttsg.ch chat. I encourage you even now, if you want, uh, you need to click on the right, the student chat. Uh, normally, most of you, it will just work. You will find the room and so on. You've already been invited. If you registered recently, maybe it won't work. Just let us know and we will, we will add you, right? So you can use that as a space uh, to chat on uh, on course topics in addition to the to the Moodle. All right, and speaking of the Moodle, this is it. This is where it is, and you will find all of the uh, all of the material over there. I'll try to have the slides there uh, the day before, in the evening before. I'm not promising we'll manage every week because we are also human beings. We can overlook things, but normally this is what we try to do. Right, the slides the day before. Um, all right, so everything is going to be in there, including the Moodle overflow. Is that the last slide? I think it's not working anymore. Yes, that's the last slide. Uh, do we have any questions before I move over to the SQL brush up? Anything you want to ask? Not in the lecture hall. On Zoom, maybe? Yes, we have questions. Yes. Oh, no, no. You throw it maybe horizontally. Are, are you okay? Yeah. Next time, maybe, maybe more horizontally. You're fine, right? Oh, no, no. Okay, it's the I, beginning. We need I, to figure out okay. how these things work. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. To, to join the chat, do I need to be connected via the VPN? Or can you I- You have just, a big? Via the- VPN or can I just join the chat? Oh, you don't, no, we need to invite you. Ah, okay. So ah. let us know if it doesn't work because it means you probably registered recently, right? And then we'll add you. Okay. But we can normally we can only add based on the on the registration on my studies. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. If you throw it horizontally, not not uh, up. Okay. Yeah. Maybe in hops. Maybe in small hops. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's not. Yeah. Exactly. Just so. Yeah. 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 I think, you know, this is an example of scalability. The thing is, we've never had that big a room before. So this is the reason why we are still discovering how to use this thing in a big room. Yeah. Yes, we can repeat that works as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then let me try like this. Um, so I wanted to uh, ask about data independence because um, you mentioned that data independence, like I think the first time when you mentioned it, you said that it's when the user doesn't really see the implementation. But then we also differentiate between the like the logical layer and the physical layer. Is that also data independence or? It's like pretty much the same idea, yes. The logical layer is what the user sees and the physical layer is what is hidden. Okay. Like it's the implementation. And the magic is that you can change the physical layer without impacting the logical layer. Okay. That makes it interoperable. You can just uh, use it across several technologies. And right. with physical layer, we mean something like um, how the bits and bytes are actually stored on the machines? Pretty much, yes. Okay. So for example, with a relational database, the logical layer means, I'm going to actually explain this in, the in what we will start soon. You have a table with rows and columns. That's the logical layer. The physical layer is how you store each row as bytes on the disk. This is the physical layer, right? The logical layer of querying, this is the SQL language, which I'm going to, to, to show you as a brochure. The implementation, that would be C++ code, right? But as a user of PostgreSQL, you never see the bytes on the disk and you never see C++. All you see is the table in SQL. That's the idea, right? Yeah. Did I answer your question? Yeah, thank you so awesome. much. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, maybe in hops again. Yeah, small small hops. All right. 
And we have another question. Just go ahead. Thank you. Um, so during the course, how can I, uh, other resources to applying big data tech to my personal projects or startups? Uh, can I speak to TAs or what can I find out more about this? Yes, absolutely. It might even make sense. I mean, it depends how, how uh, openly you want to discuss startup ideas, but even in the exercise class, uh, it's the sort of discussions that, uh, that you can have. So you, you're welcome to talk with us and, uh, and discuss these things, right? Uh, in fact, a lot of what you're learning during this semester can be useful to found a startup, can be useful in semester projects, in master's thesis. This is exactly the goal, right? That, that you can use these technologies. RumbleDB is also publicly available, open source, free, so you can also continue to use it after the lecture, right? So feel free to discuss these things. You know, this is what we are, we are for, right? Thank you. No more questions? All right. Another one over there. You can just directly speak. Uh, when do you open the quiz? Is it Tuesday? Tuesday at noon? Probably. It, it, we, we'll typically give, leave it open, I think, for one week or something. So it gets open maybe Tuesday noon, or I don't know exactly what the TAs will decide. Then it's open for a week. Uh, once you submit, you, that's it, you submit it, you won't see the solutions yet. Sometimes you might want to change your answers for a reason or another, just send an email and ask to reopen, right? And we can grant another attempt. There is a reason why we don't grant attempts from the beginning is that people started to reverse engineer the, the whole thing. <laughs> and they notice you can have a brute force attack sending a hundred times your quiz until it succeeds. So this is the reason why we only, you know, reset if you ask us. Um, Okay, awesome. We have other questions. All right. And you're fine, right? Just checking. You're all right. Okay. Maybe I can say a few words on this thing because that's actually an awesome example of big data and scaling up. You know what I told I told you the catastrophe with the capacity growing more than the throughput. Look what happened right here. We used to have a smaller lecture hall. I would say maybe I know half, half of what's going on here, right, in, in CAB, that's, that was the original plan. In that lecture hall, we could, we could just throw the, the, the without any issue, even high and so on, and it would work. Now look at what happened here. This is, again, a throughput problem. And you notice that by increasing the size of the, the, size of the room by a factor of four, if you consider the area, then suddenly the relative speed at which the microphone, the, the cat box can propagate is massively lower. This is a beautiful example of big data. This is exactly, I'm serious on that. This is a beautiful analogy. And that's why we, we are in trouble and had to be a lot of these technologies, right? Maybe we figure out ways to, to make the, the throwing the catch book more efficient. Maybe not one by one, but two or three uh, in hopes that we'll figure out. All right, no more questions. Should I switch over to the brush up? SQL brush up, yes, okay. Let me do this. So I'll start today and uh, we'll continue tomorrow. In the Zoom chats, no pending questions. Okay. So let me, oh no, I need to interrupt the recording. So see you on the other side.